Welcome, in this video I'm going to show you how you can perform a Freeman Tukey read goodness of fit test using Python. Um, I'm going to be using Python version 3.11.5 and I'm using Jupyter Lab to show the code. This video will focus on how to perform this test and not so much actually on if you should be using it because there are quite a lot of uh, different tests that could be used, for example Pearson or a likelihood ratio test. So this will solely focus on how you can perform the test. Um, it's actually a family of tests because you can set different weights and depending on those you will get different results. To show you how this can be done, I'll need some example data. So I'm going to import pandas um, and then I can load a file called GSS2012, slightly adjusted um, to have as an example using the read CSV function. Um, once the data is loaded, I actually don't need all the data. I only need one of those fields. So I selected the marital field for this. Um, and to give you a quick um, overview, there are value counts and for example 314 people uh, selected the option divorced. Now in this video I'm not going to be using my own library, um, so if you're interested in that I have a separate video where I show you how you can use my library to simply run the test. I haven't found any other libraries that can actually perform this test, so I'll have to actually do it without libraries. So to really make it do it without libraries, I shouldn't be using pandas either. So I'm going to create from the list um, a real list. So that's a Python uh, type of storage. Uh, remove any missing values. So that's what this little line is doing, the NANs. And to quickly get all the unique different types or categories that are in there I can use the set because in a set um, duplicate values are simply removed so this nicely leaves me with those five categories I want to have those counts so instead of using value counts I can simply now use count for each of those categories so that's what's being done here I need the uh, number of categories which is simply the length of for example the in this one I can use the length function for that or and the sum to have the total sample size I also need the expected counts uh, now either you already have some expected counts and if not it's quite often that you simply assume that all categories have the same uh, count in the population so that simply means to divide the sample size over the number of categories. Um, I don't need that just once, I need that then in this case k times, so I'm going to do that for each category and therefore I get now 388.25 times. Um, we need to set the weights uh, depending on which uh, Freeman Tukey read test you want to do. Um, those weights should add up to 4 and that's the only criteria so I've done the default is usually to have 4 over 3 and 8 over 3 but you can also have 3 weights that sum up to 4 or only simply 1 then once I have those weights I can fill out this scary looking formula but if you break it down it's actually not that scary this weird looking E is simply the summation sign so that's why you see this sum over here and uh, there's another sum over there as well and that basically means I'm going to loop over all the possible um, weights, uh, categories, sorry uh, so that's 0 to k and I'm gonna add uh, each time after I've done some calculations, after I've done all of this uh, I'm going to add that to the other one so that's where the second sum is hidden what we need is the weight, so that's the weight multiplied with the square root of the observed count divided over the expected count raised to the power of um, the weight index so this would be the first this would be the second actually it's minus one but I start at zero in Python so that's why I remove the minus one and simply go for the range of i of zero to k so that's what the to the power of j is. The square root is actually represented by a power of a half and we do this for every weight. We then multiply that with, uh, that's the second part, so the square root of the 
observed count minus the square root of the expected count. So that's what's being done here and there. And that difference gets squared. So when I run this, I finally get my chi-square value. We also need for the probability, the p-value, we need the degrees of freedom, which is simply the number of categories minus 1. So in this case, that's 4. And then we need to figure out what the probability is of having such a chi-square value with this many degrees of freedom, or even more extreme, if the assumption about the population would be true. Now, we could do this without libraries. I have separate documentation on that, but in this case that becomes way too much for this one single video. So I'm simply going to cheat a little bit and import stats um, uh, from side by stats. I'm going to import chi-square, which gives me the chi-square distribution. I want the upper tail probabilities, which is sometimes referred to as the survival function, so short for SF. And I can use that now and then give it the chi-square value and the degrees of freedom. And in this case, it's very, very small. This E minus 251 means that this 4.38, etc. needs to be multiplied by 1 over 10 to the power of 251, which would mean it's going to be 0 point and then about 250 zeros and then 4.3 which is far below the usual threshold of 0.05 so then we would reject the assumption about the population which was that each category would have an equal uh, that it would be distributed equally so it won't be distributed equally in the population we should actually also check the minimum expected count uh, since all expected counts were equal sorry I'm gonna scroll up they're all the same so the minimum expected count is simply that 388.2 uh, some will say it has to be at least 1, some will say it has to be at least 5, well we're fine with that. And uh, the percentage of cells sometimes that have an expected count less than 5 should not be, sh should be 0, well, some will say, some will say it has to be 25% uh, or less. Um, in this case all of them have an expected count of above 5, so that's all fine. You can also opt to add a so-called correction. Uh, the ESP Pearson one is perhaps the most simple one, which is simply the sample size minus 1 over the sample size, and you multiply the chi-square uh, result that you found with that. So um, the, the chi-square uh, uh, ft, so this one. Um, the Williams correction is slightly more complex, but um, the case number of categories and we already have degrees of freedom we already have, so you fill out this formula and in that case you divide the original chi-square value by that. So that's what I've done here. Um, you could also apply a Yates continuity correction, which should actually only be used if you have a 2x2 two two table. Um, how exactly that's done is sometimes a little bit different, but I like to use this one. You subtract a half if the observed count is greater than the expected, and you add it if it's less than. That can quickly be done with um, the a for loop, and then simply do the if and the elif. Um, last but not least, um, you can then have to redo the calculations, and that gives you the new chi-square value. Alright, and that's how you can perform a freeman tukey read test, a goodness of fit test, uh, with Python, without using my library. I hope this video was helpful, and thank you for watching.